the Troy Bill Tiller has stumbled. So got it running to start the, the year, getting ready for planting season here, and discovered we've got a problem. Let's go take a look. So when I pulled this out of winter storage, the engine started up just fine, but when I went to check the operation of the tines, I could not engage the tines here. And if I pull this lever, you can see it starts to go, but it won't go the whole way. Now how this works, this is the PTO horse model from uh, the late 80s. This one was made in 86. Basically inside of there, there's a three spline shaft. And when you pull on this engagement lever, that shaft slides back and then engages in the mating shaft on the tine unit that you see there so that you can actually engage and disengage the tines. And what's happened is when I opened this up, there was all grease in here. However, it was all around the outside and had gotten away from the shaft in the center, which has kind of a surface coat of rust on there. And so all that is seized up in there. So I need to try to get that free. I probably will need to take out this engagement lever here. There's a snap ring on the end. There's a key on that. And then hopefully if I can get that to spin on the shaft, I'll then be able to work it back and get it moving freely and grease everything up. So hopefully this will work out. What I'm gonna start with though is just getting that snap ring out, trying to get the key out, and then getting some penetrating oil up in there and just let that sit for a while. It's always nice to have a parts manual. Even though I don't have a service manual or anything, the parts manual has exploded view diagrams of everything. So what you can see is there is that uh, PTO shaft we got this snap ring, there's a key. Behind all of that is the seal for the transmission. So this housing out here is actually not completely weather tight the way that the tines attachment bolts on, there's no gasket or anything, but there is a seal behind this shaft separating it from the main transmission. And in the side, if we come over here, that's the engagement lever. You can see there's a, a washer, a big nut in the side of the housing, and then the shaft has a rocker on it with a screw in it, and that moves this back and forth by being in that groove there in that PTO. So that's how this all works, and having this diagram is really helpful in seeing how it could come apart. When dealing with a snap ring, it's helpful to have the right tools. These are a snap ring plier if you can see the fine tip on there so with that I can stick it into the holes on the snap ring spread the pliers and pop that snap ring out just like that and of course it dropped down here let's get that out there it is there's the snap ring so we have that now, you can see the key is there on the bottom. Let's go for this key. All right, there it is. So we got the key out as well. Now I'll be able to get some penetrating oil in there and hopefully work that free on that shaft. This is the penetrating oil that I am working with. Hopefully it'll get the job done. I've got the penetrating oil in this can here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of it on that shaft around that PTO and hope that it soaks in and frees that up. All right, taking the next step here, I took the engagement lever off of this shaft. We're gonna loosen this up. This is an inch and an eighth so that we can take this engagement mechanism or shaft out. So this big nut is an inch and an eighth. So this unscrews pretty easily. And all right, we got some oil here and stuff that squirted penetrating oil in there 
plus grease. Here it is. Let's clean it up. So interesting little piece here. This is how the tines on a Troy built PTO horse are engaged. So where my fingers are is where the shift lever is. And basically when you engage it, you rotate this way and that pushes that PTO back to engage with the tine unit. And when you disengage, it moves back. Now you can actually see here when I was running it, trying to engage it, I was applying pressure and force to it and that was clearly um, wearing this in that PTO shaft itself. So I should probably replace this Allen screw, assuming I can get this PTO shaft moving. So I have been working at this. This has been sitting now overnight with the penetrating oil. I've squirted penetrating oil in there a couple of times. And I finally had to resort to heat. Now I'm just using a plumbing torch here with map gas. But I've been heating this little bits at a time and then tapping it and kind of prying on it with the screwdriver. And you can see I've gotten it to rotate. So there's the key slot in the PTO shaft. There is the key slot on the shaft coming out of the transmission. So I've got it to spin. I haven't got it to slide back yet, but we're making progress in the right direction. Doesn't want to come back, but I have rotated it a revolution plus on that shaft. It just doesn't want to move back. See if I can show this. So if you can see, that is now spinning freely on that shaft. So you can kind of see that. So if I can get this to move back now and get that off of that shaft, clean up that shaft and get it back on, grease it, we should be good to go. Probably I'll just put this lever back in and see if I can't get this to slide back toward me. And voila, I put this back in, hook this lever arm back up and we are sliding forwards and backwards on that shaft. I think what I'm gonna do actually is take that lever back out, see if I can get that PTO stub shaft all the way out, and then I wanna grease the heck out of that inner shaft with, with grease, and then I'm gonna pack this with grease and we'll seal her back up. We're ready to go. To get this little stub out, this is actually a chainsaw carburetor adjusting screwdriver, but it actually fits in there can actually push if I get into the slot on this thing. I can actually well, I'm having trouble getting on it, but I can move this up. I was doing better with this than I was with the lever. There we go. Now, can I get my fingers on it enough to... You know what? Let me... I think pliers are the right tool. All right. Let's see. There it is. So just so you see what this looks like, that groove there is where that engagement lever runs. I'm gonna clean this up, grease this thoroughly, and then put some grease inside there as well. There we go, looking a little bit better. What I'm gonna do is get some grease on my finger I'll work it up in the inside there, work it up on the shaft in the housing. 
and then put this back together. The hardest part's gonna be lining up that engagement lever with this slot. Now that this moves freely forward and back, there is such a thing as too far each way to be able to line it up when you stick it in the side. So hopefully that's not too difficult for me to get back in here together. Ideally, I would have a tub of grease, but all I've got actually is a grease gun, but what I can do is get some on my finger here. Okay, got some grease on my finger. I'm gonna take that and work it in here. In there. Let's work that all up in there. Coat that nicely with grease. Okay. Now let's do the same thing up inside the housing. I'm actually just gonna put a squirt up in there, kind of on the top. Yeah, let's get my finger right in here. smearing that grease all around that shaft. Okay. Now we're gonna take this. The keyway is to the bottom right now. Let me slip that in. And I actually am not gonna worry about getting the key in there yet. What I'm gonna focus on is working with this little eccentric shaft for engaging it and getting that in there. And the reason I'm gonna work with this piece here first is because this is actually tricky because it threads in and until you screw it in, it doesn't actually engage with that dog or in that shaft. I'm noticing this actually looks a little bit bent. I may try to bring that back a little bit right now so that it engages a little bit more. So what I ended up doing is clamping this in a vise and I just bent this little arm back this way just a little bit to straighten it out. I think probably with the in and out before it actually got pushed against the side of the shaft and bent a little bit. So you just gotta be real careful with this going in. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get that end in the hole and then get it up and then you kinda, at this point, when it's not threaded in at all, there's no contact. It doesn't reach into the PTO shaft and I can't really show that with the camera because you just can't see in there for that kind of detail. Now the issue is I gotta find where that groove is and get this into it. And I think I got it. Yep, I did. So we're in, and as I rotate, we're now moving forward and back, which is exactly what we want. All right, so let's get that key lined up and then get that snap ring in there. Here is that key and here's the little snap ring. You know what I might need to do yeah, is put this back on so that I can actually lock this. Oops. It's all well and good, but we're not. there we go. Disengaged. Let me lock this in. Now, engaged. And now it'll hold there because it's actually going to latch, which should give me the ability to get that key in there. Beautiful. Now we got that in. Snap ring goes on there. So what we do is we, oh, 
Well, that's that. Well, it was disappointing to lose that snap ring, but nothing that a quick trip to AutoZone for a set of assorted snap rings can't fix. Now I just need to find the right size in this. I think this is a little bit bigger than the original. This is a three quarter inch, but we're gonna try that, see how that works. This time, I'm not gonna stretch it until I get it in the housing in case it does go flying. There we go. That's on there. There it is on the end of that shaft. We're ready to grease this up and put this together. All right. So I'm going to put a few pumps of grease. I'm going to put a couple of them right up in that back area towards where that lever is to kind of pack in the back there as much as I can. Do that over here. Trying to pump grease into this everywhere. All right, there we go. At that point, there, that shaft is all buried in grease. Let's work it back and forth a bit. I'm gonna put in a little more. Okay, let's work that in there. Get some on my finger here. I'm actually gonna smear this onto this tine attachment piece just to coat it. The nice thin layer of grease on this. When this goes back together, of course, it will mate up with that and be well greased. It's definitely a maintenance thing that I will check in the future to make sure this doesn't seize up. Now I did not show taking this apart, but the way this tine attachment goes on is you have these swing bolts. So basically you line up this, there's a locator pin there, which sits on that pin there. So you basically get the tine attachment lined up on there and then you swing these bolts around and then tighten them up. So we'll go ahead and put that tine attachment back on and get ready to test fire this. So the front of the tiller is supported on a wood block right now. This unit has the bumper, which makes this a little bit easier. And the wheels are actually in gear. So what we gotta do is we just pick this up and work it in. And now it's on that pin and we can swing these swing bolts around. There's the one. There's the other. And now it's just a matter of tightening these up. In fact, the tiller will want to sit down now because the rear is heavier. They're tight. Let's get these shift levers up out of the way a little. We'll get the three quarter inch wrench and tighten it the rest of the way up. You'll notice there's no gasket or anything in there. So technically that housing, this is not weather tight, which is why I think we ran into this issue. There is the ability for some moisture to get in there. And if it does, you can have that engagement clutch seize up. So, Definitely something worth checking. It's not that hard to remove this tine attachment and just make sure things are greased up in there. So we have the engine running at idle here. I'm gonna go ahead and swing that engagement over. And then when we pull this down, we're in freewheel, so the tiller won't drive forward, but the tine should be spinning. We're all When 
this was seized up and I couldn't engage it, I thought we were in big trouble. Um, very fortunate that with some penetrating oil, a little bit of vibration through some tapping and a little bit of heat through a plumbing torch, we were able to get that free and get this thing back up and running good as new. So if you have a PTO horse model from the mid 80s and you can't engage your tines, that is the first place to look and with a little bit of patience and effort you should be able to get yours freed up.